Want to learn the hard podcasting skills necessary to support your favorite shows? My friends at Podcast Production School have you covered. Their online course is designed to help you master the skills and strategies needed to launch, manage, and grow podcasts for business owners or professional podcasters. They'll help you learn everything from audio editing to show note creation and even marketing and promotion. Listeners of the Career Challenges podcast can also get $100 off when they use the promo code KYLE100 at checkout. That's KYLE100, K-Y-L-E dollar sign 100. While you're there, download the free podcast production and launch checklist. This resource requires no purchase and gets you started on learning the steps to produce and launch a podcast. Download the free podcast production and launch checklist today. To do that, visit podcastproductionschool.com slash workbook to grab yours. Hi, I'm Kyle Workerly, Certified Professional Ghostwriter. I'm glad you're listening as I welcome industry experts to share stories of lessons learned the hard way, overcoming professional hurdles, turning experience into actual knowledge, and how to connect with your target audience. This is the Career Challenges Podcast. Welcome to the Career Challenges Podcast, and I have a returning guest with me today, uh, Nancy Soleri. She is the host of the Living Full Out radio show and founder of Living Full Out. So, Nancy, welcome back. Thank you for having me. Awesome. And so, um, you know, a lot's happened since we, we last talked, um, but, you know, there's just a lot of great material in that, that first uh, episode that I feel we, we weren't really able to touch on, so we're, we're getting the uh, go back to that. So just real quick, um, you know, give me an update on how things have changed for you in the, uh, the last uh, six, seven months, I, I want to say. Well, gosh, I mean, if we're talking about business wise, you know, the, the thing about life and the thing about business is you always try to think outside the box. You always try to create. So I would say that we are video making machines at Living Full Out. <laughs> we try to yeah. conquer so many different challenges that people face and give solutions. And so we've been really busy in that way, uh, writing a couple of books that um, are working with a publisher on and um, just, you know, really intentional with how we're spending our time, which, you know, even in this current economic climate and, you know, with everything with the, the virus and this and that, I find that every day it is helpful to wake up with intention, with a focus for the day. And while not everything may get completed, at least go for my top three. Mm. Yeah. Awesome. So uh, with with living full out, um, and, you know, you said you'd, you'd built that up and you're, you're in the radio space. Um, this, the feeling I'm getting is that, you know, kind of radio is, is not what it used to be and everything, everybody's in the podcast now. And I know it's kind of ironic me mentioning that, that we're on a podcast since we're on a podcast. Um, but I mean, what are, what are you doing now with living full out and how is that different from when you started? It's it's actually really exciting. Um, I mean, our show started way back when in 2010, so it's been 10 years. And, you know, back then I was just taking calls. I was a life coach on the end, uh, other end of the mic and working at KFWB, and, and that was the show, caller after caller after caller. And then in between, as we segued to different stations and the show grew and we had sponsors, it was just trying to find that rhythm between – keeping the integrity of the show all about motivation. But as you know, advertisers and sponsors <laughs> want their airtime too. So it's a True, delicate yeah. dance. And then really what we found over time is finding advertisers and sponsors that had a solution, that had a resource to the life dilemmas that our listeners were calling in about. And then we coupled that with bringing on inspirational guests that shared about a tragedy, a crisis, a disability, what they overcame. And, you know, it, it's just really from beginning to end of our show, I, I feel so grateful to be on the other end. And, and it's, it's wild because I realize I'm blind. I realize I'm legally blind and there's a lot of challenges that I faced. But I hear some of these other people's stories and I, I think, gosh, I'm so lucky I'm blind, <laughs> you know, uh, because <laughs> people go through a lot. We're warriors. I love mm -hmm. it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that is amazing. You know, and sometimes you there's that, I guess, a, a unseen benefit 
to sometimes having having something like that happen and you know unless you go through it it's hard to actually see it that way so for me i you know i can't imagine not being able to see so i I just you know i I don't know yeah it's pretty wild although you know it's interesting i was with a friend not too long ago and he had been traveling the world ukraine thailand all these places and he was we were hanging out in newport beach california and he was like oh i can't believe i'm back here all the people all the materialistic all the fancy cars and and I and he was he was grunting about it like he like he was like he was mm-hmm. in a torture camp and I'm like, what are you so upset about? You're in Newport Beach, California. People would dream to be here. And then he's like, oh, I get it. And I all of a sudden I got it. See, I being blind, I don't see the luxury cars. I don't see the plastic surgery. I don't see people trying to be something. I hear people's voices. I meet people based upon their touch, their voice, their personality. So his experience of sitting there in that lounge watching people was different than mine. I was just hearing people have a good time. I was just seeing people let loose. It was just really Mm -hmm. a a great moment. Yeah. So when you're, uh, I guess, talking with someone either on the radio or if or when you do one-on-one coaching, um, I guess, are there little cues or maybe like a tick somehow in their voice that, you know, kind of gives you a hint that maybe there's something more behind what they're saying, or even I hope they're, they're being completely honest with you as well. Are you able to pick up on that? Yeah, I am. And a lot of times what I have found is people, people are really hungry to talk. And I think in some ways we're programmed not to, or we're programmed to give the right answers, to look good. But if, and I I want everyone to apply this to just your neighbor, your friend, when you can peel away the layers and let somebody talk, like there's a statement that I do use sometimes in coaching, which is what's important to you about dot, dot, dot. So someone could say, oh, I'm so, I can't believe I'm not losing weight. I'm so frustrated. And I would say, well, what's important to you about losing these next 10 pounds? Well, I want to look good for my trip. Well, what's important to you about looking good for your trip? Because blah, blah, blah. And when you allow people to talk, now you're giving them one of the biggest gifts of all because ultimately it might come down to the fact that that person wants to look good on their trip because maybe they go on all these other trips and they're the third man out, the fifth man out. Maybe everybody else meets people on the trips and, you know, feels attractive and they never have. You know, it, it's hard to say. So I like to give my clients and I like to give, you know, people in my life an opportunity to talk. And it's almost kind of funny because I'll sit with someone and like literally 45 minutes into a dinner, they're like, oh, enough about me. How are you? And I'm like, I'm good. <laughs> Keep talking, you know. Wow. That's amazing. Um, so when you're, I guess, so when you're, you're helping people and you're listening to them, I mean, it's, it's a skill, right? It's not like you were born with this ability just to listen to people. It, it's a skill, right? Definitely a skill, definitely a skill. And, and you want to listen. I mean, and again, anybody can apply this to who they're talking to, but you want to listen for that opportunity for someone to have a moment. And a moment can be with a neighbor and a friend. For me, it might be a guest. And the moment is, if you're going to go through the hurdles of life, if you're going to be bruised and battered and bumped and fall down, at least give that person the moment of reflection of what they got out of it. So sometimes when I'm talking to a guest, you know, as we get to the end of the conversation, I'll be like, gosh, you know, if you could go back in time and maybe they're 40 at the time I'm talking to them, I would say, what would you tell your 12-year-old self? Or, you know, have you ever been able to square that circle of the why? Like, why did it happen? And people really are hungry for purpose. They're hungry for what is the meaning of life? Which is oftentimes no one asks. Mm-hmm. Wow. So, I mean, a lot of people say we're, we're listening to respond. We're not listening to hear. I mean, how, what are, I guess, some of your techniques to, to truly listen to people so that way your mind is open and there's no other thoughts going through your head and you're not thinking, well, I'm going to say this once they finally stop talking. Yeah. You know, it, it, it's funny. Sometimes, um, people have these mechanisms that they go to when they're nervous. 
So I will notice that some guests giggle when they're nervous, when they're going into territory that they're not sure they want to go into because it may tap into or trigger an emotion. You know, they start to giggle. And, and I pick up on that and I say, you know what? Clearly, you're a light in this world, right? You're giggling, you're having a good time. But when he put a gun to your head, I can't imagine you were giggling then. You know, what were you thinking? Mm -hmm. You know, did you think you were going to. A lot of times, it's asking people to go back in time. And sometimes that's hard. You know, we actually have some guests that I've had that I think their stories are amazing, but it's too hard to go back. Like, they don't want to go back. They want to stay in the present, they want to look forward. And I respect that. But again, I think that we learn from each other. I think we're bonded by what we've overcome and we're bonded by what we're shooting for. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Definitely. So then, um, like you were saying, when you, you're listening to somebody and then they finally realize, oh, I've been talking for 45 minutes nonstop. Um, and then they ask, you know, well, enough about me. What about you? Do you feel that they're kind of in a more, I guess, open state of mind? Because once they feel like they've truly been listened to, do you see kind of a change in their, their demeanor and their posture and their way of thinking? Yeah, they actually come, and again, visually I'm not seeing their posture or I'm not seeing their face, mm -hmm. but I get this sense that they needed to purge this. They needed to vent this. Or, or they needed to just like talk it out. And sometimes, you know, we have to consider in our lives, we have all these different people in our lives, but not everybody is the empathetic ear. You know, some people have that techie mind and you go to them for that, but you're not going to go to them if you're crying, right? <laughs> or, yeah, you know, true. some people are going to be those, those people that are, have the business mind, but maybe they're almost too blunt and they're not the person you're going to go to in a crisis. So, I think it's about knowing who are those people. So I think for my friend base, my family base, I'm that person they come to just to, just to talk it out. Because a lot of times, believe it or not, the answers are inside us. We just have to actually verbalize it. And that's why journaling is important and talking is important because it's there. We just have to get it out of our mind. We have to get it out of our heart, like just toss it out there in the world and see what's possible. You know? Awesome. Awesome. So did you, I guess, did you learn the skill? Was it a conscious effort for you? You know, it's wild. I, when I was writing a book recently and I was writing a chapter kind of going back in my life, I, I realized that I think this was starting to develop already when I was around 10 because um, I grew up with some domestic violence in my family. My dad had anger issues, and then they got divorced, and then my sisters had anorexia, and then my mom got breast cancer. And I think throughout all my family's ups and downs, the one constant counselor of the family was me. I would be the 10-year-old sitting across from my mom consulting her through a divorce, or I would be, you know, I, I was that person. And so I think it started really young that I became that, that sounding board. And, um, and then I think when you have that, and that is your role within the family, and maybe for others, that's their role at the office, maybe that's their role within their friendship base, you know, then you naturally start to harness those skills more and more because you, you see people through all the different colors of grieving. You know, you, you're there when they're angry, you're there when they're sad, you're there when they're hopeless, you're there when they're depressed. And that, I think, is how I really kind of harnessed my listening skills is just being that person for so many. Awesome. Awesome. So obviously this, this skill is, is very useful. You're very effective at uh, helping people and, and listening to them, obviously, uh, whenever you're doing a living full out broadcast or one-on-one or -on -one coaching. But you also mentioned you were in the previous episode as well. You mentioned you were a producer and an on-air talent. Um, how has those experiences contributed to uh, you being good at what you're doing now? Well, it's interesting. Over my time in schooling, I, I did in front of the camera and behind the camera. And, you know, really, as a visually impaired person, no one wants me plugging in and out the wires. <laughs> you know, these days, my <laughs> behind the scenes yeah. are, are not used as much. Um, no one needs me shooting the camera because I don't know which way I'm shooting. Um, but what I have found is being in front of the camera or being the one who I guess is the voice or the one who 
you know, delivers the content, delivers the coaching. I think that's really more in my wheelhouse because what I want everybody to picture, when we do this in the studio, I can't see the camera. I have this ring light that goes around the camera, and so I just shoot for in the middle of that ring, and that's how I, I do the videos. And I have people that uh, I can't see their fingers with countdown, so we have different things that we do behind the scenes where they might lay this stuffed animal giraffe on my on my leg, or they might give me a flick, or they might, you know, um, you know, uh, put their hand on my knee to give me different cues for timing. And I share all that with you because as I'm hearing a guest maybe tell me their challenge or story or I'm listening to a caller that calls in, I'm with you all. I am with you. I am present because, you know, as a visually impaired disabled woman, I'm all, I'm also just doing my best to um, – to host the show and, and give advice. And, and that's what I really want everybody to get. Just do your best. And for me, it's a natural fit just to be a good listener and, and be a host, and, and that's what I do. Awesome. Awesome. So uh, shifting gears a little bit um, here, uh, how have things changed for, for you and your experience as a, as a life coach from when you started uh, to now? So much. So much. Oh, my goodness. I remember going back through and getting my certification and, and really, really good textbooks and really, really good role play. But the thing is, is the vibration of somebody's energy, you know, really listening to them. You can't find that in a textbook. You got to feel it. You got to be present with the person. And, um, and also you have to be willing to always do better and grow. So even for me, I, I've been very intentional with what I say to people. For example, here's a coaching moment, right? How, how often do we say to someone, I'll call you right back. Okay, but what is right back? Is right back two minutes? Is right back 10 minutes, right? Or give me just a second. I'll call you right back. You're never really going to call them back in one second, right? It's going to take at least 30 seconds, true. Right? right? So I, I think that's kind of what I've learned over time is to be very clear in what I say. And sometimes people will say, wow, you're really, um, you're really intentional with what you say and you are clear and, and, and it's nice that they say that. But I think I've learned that over the years that if my client is distracted, if they're emotional and they're kind of stuck in – worries and and their mind is going a bunch of different directions then i i want to be that that anchor i want to be that stable hand and talk talk slow but talk with confidence so that they know i got them I, i'll catch them mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. awesome awesome so then um i mean when you you started i guess officially as a as a life coach um i mean how many quote unquote life coaches were there at the time because I, I feel I'm seeing a lot more of them now um, a lot more people who want to help others as a life coach and so I'm wondering you know was there just not enough to to begin with at some, at one, at one actually point? when I got involved there were already a lot of life coaches and but I felt I felt like everybody kind of had their lane so mm -hmm. some people were business coach some people were marriage coaches some people were cancer survivor coaches. And I think sometimes it's figuring out, you know, what kind of coach are you? Back when I first started coaching, actually, I was a coach to two groups and two groups only. It was women entrepreneurs and the visually impaired. And the visually impaired blind group was really because I did so much volunteer at different organizations because that's my community with my disability. It was a natural fit. Women entrepreneurs as well. You know, I, was, I would attend a lot of women groups, and as my career grew, they would want me to speak or do whatever. But as the Living Full Out show grew, as Living Full Out the company grew, the, the demands and the, the variation of different dilemmas that people overcame had me grow as a coach. So now it's not those two signature groups anymore. It's a much larger audience. So I think that what I've learned over time and what I've seen maybe other people do is you can either be very niched in your lane and, and focus on one group, or you might be more broad in terms of servicing many people. Okay. 
Okay. So you're, you're still seeing though, a lot of overlap between your groups. I mean, you're still using the, the same skills as a life coach. You just maybe, I guess, tweaking them a little bit, uh, depending on the needs of the group. Yeah, because the needs of the group are going to be different. So yeah, if it's, if it's a business coach, uh, coaching environment that I'm in and I'm helping someone and they have, you know, certain benchmarks or certain skills, or maybe they need to bring on new hires and delegation, then, then we're kind of in that mindset. And it's thinking about, you know, connecting the dots. How do we get there? Now, somebody who is going through a life coaching dilemma, maybe it's a divorce or maybe it's infertility or whatever. Now we get into solution mode. We go into, okay, if, if, if having your own children may not work, let's look at what all the other options are, fostering, adopting, volunteer, or if somebody's going through a divorce and their heart is crushed, you know, it's, it's, it's showing them how to take that love they had for their partner and infuse it into other people in their life. And, and then they, they feel that their heart is no longer beat up. It's no longer bruised and battered. It, it's able to, to breathe and, and give again. And so uh, they're just two different types of clients. And um, so I have to kind of mirror and match my clients. Mm -hmm. True. True. Um, I guess, do you find it difficult sometimes to really uh, do the mirroring and matching? I mean, is it kind of a, you know, if you're having an off day? Um, I, I don't find it difficult, but I find that I need to sometimes do outside research and bring it to my client. It, it, it just sometimes in life, sometimes people are good writers, sometimes people are good researchers, and sometimes they're good communicators. It doesn't mean you're going to be all three. So I might have a client who is really good at writing down all their thoughts. But every week I give them an assignment to go online or go to a physical location and look into resources, and they never do it. And it's just because maybe research is not their thing or maybe getting to a location, maybe they drive, maybe they don't, that's a stumbling block. So wherever my clients are, are, are having a hurdle, I, I try to help them with that. So I'll bring them research. I'll bring them ideas. Um, and then we'll talk them out. And that's where that communication part comes in. Would you like to be a guest on the Career Challenges podcast? Go to careerchallengespodcast.com to find out how. While you're there, check out other episodes and download them through Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Podcast Addict, CastBox, Spotify, iHeartRadio, and more. The Career Challenges podcast is hosted by me, Kyle Weckerly. I'm a certified professional ghostwriter who works with business thought leaders and industry experts to write polished manuscripts, assess their publishing options, and create book marketing plans. I work with consultants, high ticket salespeople, coaches, speakers, C level executives, and business owners. My authors have worked for USAA, Vistage, Booz Allen Hamilton, Austin Technology Council, and Twitch. My authors know that writing a book will help them change the world. They know that the story they tell will create that change. So they want to write a book to serve as a platform for their marketing endeavors. They know a published book will help them secure more speaking gigs, market their expertise, promote a product or service, and more. So reach out to Kyle Weckerly at weckerlywriter.com to start your publishing journey. Maybe you're not ready to start that journey just yet, but you do know that you want to write a book. So where to begin? Well, if you're ready, go to weckerlywriter.com to download 101 questions to ask before writing your book. This will help you get started and will offer guidance on the next steps to turn your ideas, experience, and actual knowledge into a completed manuscript. Just visit weckerlywriter.com to get your free copy today. That's weckerlywriter.com. W-E-C-K-E-R-L-Y-W-R-I-T-E-R.com. And now back to the Career Challenges podcast. So you would, um, when we started the program, you mentioned you're doing a lot more uh, video these days. Um, I mean, what, it, what was the motivation behind starting to do uh, more video? Well, video is just one of those ways to coach people in a very timeless 24-7 manner. Um, I, I, I can't be on, I can't be behind the mic 
24-7 or I'd never get sleep <laughs> and I would never do anything else, right? <laughs> but the videos can be there. And I don't know about you, especially right now with everything going on, there's a lot of people having sleepless nights, right? I like to know Definitely. that they can go to one of our our recordings of our show or they can go to our YouTube channel and they can look for a title that resonates with what they're going through and, and they can get motivated. I never want people to feel alone. Loneliness is a really deep pit. And mm-hmm. the way that you get out of that pit is somebody let, somebody reaches out a hand or you have a, something that you can go to, a playlist, a uh, you know, a church to get your inspiration, whatever it may be. So we try to lend that hand and we try to give them the videos so that when they're at that pit, when they're in that place of lonely, in that place of despair, we're there. And so we try to cover topics that are career advice topics. We have lifestyle topics um, and um, try to cover as many bases as we can. Awesome. Awesome. So when you first started, I guess, creating these, these videos to put out, did you, did you have like a brainstorming session? You know, we, we want to talk about this in a video and that in a video. Was it kind of like that? Oh, we still do that today. We still do that today. Um, we have, um, we have teams. We have a YouTube team and a Pinterest team and an Instagram team and our social media uh, uh, team is, is, has different legs and arms to it. It's not just one group. And everybody focuses on that particular platform because there's Instagram TV, there's Facebook Watch, there's video on Pinterest, there's, of course, YouTube, and there's even a LinkedIn TV. So we we maximize our video on every platform, but not every platform is different. Obviously, LinkedIn is going to be more career-minded or Facebook is more lifestyle. So... Some of our video ideas come from the people that follow our page and and they send us direct messages with what they're facing. And then sometimes we take it to the people. (laughs) Our team goes out there and they interview friends and family in their life and what are they going through, what keeps them up at night. And, And that's a lot of times how we get the ideas of what we record. Awesome. So are you seeing, I guess, a a common trend among the uh, requests that are coming in? People are distracted. That is one thing. You know, people have a hard time maintaining their focus. And a lot of times that's because there is so much going on, whether it be that they're distracted by their bills and will I pay them, or they're distracted by a relationship. Does he or she love me or not, right? Or they're, <laughs> or, or they're daydreaming at their nine-to-five job wishing that, the business they wanted to start could move along faster so they could jump from that job to their own company. And, you know, people are looking for that next thing. And what I always try to tell people is it's good to look forward. I'm a big believer in dreams and goals. But I also think that you're going to miss it. You're going to miss the lessons and you're going to miss capturing your own personal growth if you're not within the present. So, again, the butterflies of a relationship, those are a fun time. The dating time, the courting time, that's a fun time. You may want to get married, and that's good, but enjoy the journey. Or if someone's at a nine-to-five job, rather than just daydreaming about the day they get to open their own business, don't forget about all the things that they're learning from their colleagues, from their teammates. Soak up becoming a better presenter. Soak up how to use technology like Zoom or different things. We all are teachers to each other along the way of getting to our destination. I never would have thought of it that way. That's that's a new insight. Thank you. You got it. Yeah. Yeah. So um, how many videos are you putting out, I guess, uh, a day or a week or a, a month? Well, we crank out at least 10 a week. Okay. So 40 to 50 a month. And we, wow, we sometimes they are purely released for, um, for the enjoyment of our, our YouTube subscribers. And, and sometimes they're more intentional. Like right now, we just did a video on how to be most efficient with this time that we're at home, right? Because everybody's home right now, right? Take, take this time much, and yeah. organize or learn guitar or 
play a board game with your family, you know. And and so we try to record some videos that are intentional around a national day or around something that's top of mind for people. And then other ones are just going to be more on an educational topic or more about lifestyle or personal growth. Mm -hmm. And so are you experimenting with length? Do you want to do like short ones or do you find longer ones tend, tend to work better? Short. Short always works better. And that's really just because it's, it's kind of like a, like a movie trailer, right? It kind of gets to the point. Mm -hmm. Sometimes some of these movies, I don't know about you, but they're really long. They're three hours, right? And so <laughs> we try to give people the goodies right away, right? So generally, our videos don't last more than five minutes. Okay, cool. That seems to be a good length, something you could um, probably watch while you're, you're waiting in line or something like that. Yeah, or you might just want the, you know, the spice of life variety. So if someone's on our playlist, they can bop around. They can watch a relationship video one minute and, you know, let me go look at the career advice playlist. I get career advice the next. It's not a big commitment of time, but I always make sure to give resources and solutions. I'm, I'm really big on that. And, you know, the, the other thing I want to tell your um, audience, too, because um, so many people now have Alexa, and, of course, there's the App Store. They can just search Living Full Out Radio, and we actually have a 24-hour station that plays wow. 24 hours a day. So you can just say, Alexa, put it in your skill. It's, it's a skill that you put in your Alexa, and you just say, play Living Full Out Radio. And if you're up at 2 a.m. cleaning the floors, we're there. Wow, that's really cool. I've tried Alexa, and I, I couldn't get it to work because I put in the skill thing. I went through the whole skill process, and then I you know, was talking to my fire stick and said, Alexa, play this, and it didn't do it. So I don't know what I'm going, doing wrong there, so I'll have to go back and, and look at it. Well, and, and you know what? I, I, I hear you on that because it's, it's sometimes technology is a blessing and a curse, right? But I empower people to call 1-800-AMAZON or whatever it is, right? Um, I, I, they actually have a really good customer service line only for Alexa. They have a dedicated department for Alexa only, for, for the Echo. So if Definitely. you are having challenges, you know, you, you don't have to talk to the same grocery people or the, the big Amazon customer service. They have a dedicated department. Mm -hmm. Wow. I didn't know that. Thank you for, for letting me know. You got it. All right. And then you also mentioned uh, books that you're working with a publisher and you're putting together a book. Yes. Yeah, so it's a little bit of a memoir meets kind of tackling life issues. And so we're working on that. And we're also writing other books that are more theme based. So, for example, a lot of times right now, you know, people are dealing with topics that are that have really turned out to be um, big in our environment, like, for example, infertility. And, you know, there's a lot of people that chose to do the career thing before the marriage or relationship or kid thing, and then it becomes harder, right? So we try to, mm -hmm. we're trying to tackle topics like that. You know, even um, sexual harassment, believe it or not, you know, I got a direct message from someone yesterday who said, you know, can you please show me where you have radio shows that deal with that topic? I want to send it to a friend of mine. And, you know, so obviously the Me Too and, and all of that, it, it's mm -hmm. an important topic. Yeah. So we try to consider, you know, what are top of mind topics for people, create the content, do the legwork, bring them solutions, and then we put that in, in workbooks as well. Wow. Okay, so workbooks. So something kind of, I guess, short and easy to read? Short and easy. Those The topic ones yeah. are always short and easy. Uh, and then, like, the larger book is going to be one that uh, will be coming out, you know, down the line here. It's still obviously working with the publisher. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Awesome. So, uh, you know, what was your, I guess, your motivation for wanting to write a book? Or did somebody actually approach you and say, Nancy, you need a, to write a book on this? Such a great question. You know, it's interesting. People have said to me over the years, Nancy, you should write a book. Or, wow, you've been through so much. You know, do you have a book? And th the thing is, I, I think books are great. Okay, I, I tend to do yeah. audio books, right, because I can't read a book. Obviously. But 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 I think books are great. But when it comes to, to a memoir or, you know, something in that space, nonfiction, 
the, only the author knows when they're ready. So for many, many years, I still felt like the book was being written through experiences. And it's only kind of been in the recent year that I felt like, okay, now this book is ready. And so I think we all have a book within us that we're writing. It's just, you know, you will know when it's time. And it'll be time when you feel like it's come full circle. Like you feel like, okay, enough of the past experiences now make sense as to who I've become or certain choices that were made and different outcomes that have been realized. Wow. Wow. So then I guess looking back on this last year, can you, I guess, point to a moment where you kind of knew, okay, now we're, we're full circle or we're close enough to full circle that I can start writing my book? Yeah. Um, you know, I will say, actually, let me go with, uh, cause I, I, I don't mind talking about, I'll, I'll go with like, you know, the infertility part, you know, I, 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 my lot time I've had five miscarriages. Um, I've mm. thought about different ways and, you know, fostering, but as I did that research, given my disability, it's, it's, it's a long road because it, you know, they, they're, they already it's a long road if you're fully sighted and you're, you know, two to two people sighted, let alone a, you know, legally blind woman wanting to uh, foster yeah. children or adopt children. Right. So, you know, in some ways I would have had to have birthed my own children and then that wasn't working. And so, you know, I had to kind of feel through, I had to kind of do all the consideration and, you know, don't, you know, the donor part considered that, but thought no on that one. And, and what I decided is that, you know, I'm blessed to have a really busy life, a full life. Like, my friends are my kids. My sisters are like my kids. <laughs> and I also am building my fur family and, you know, doggies and cats, and they're like our kids, right? Mm -hmm. So sometimes mm -hmm. in life, you have to figure out why do I want something in my case? Why would I want to have children? What, what is that love? What, what, what am I trying to give away? What am I trying to teach? What, what is that moment I'm trying to get? And honestly, when I'm holding my Chihuahua mix rescue Charlie in my hands and he's laying on his back and I'm rubbing his tummy, he is just as lovable as a little infant in my arms. Mm -hmm. So True. moments like that are full circle, right? But you have to go through it. You have to go through the tears. You have to go through the anger. You have to go through the, the, the times of digging in and looking at options and getting resourceful. But at the end, you come out of it with some clarity and a new renewed focus. Now, you better believe I'm an amazing dog mom. <laughs> So, <laughs> I, I have no doubts. I have yes. no doubts. Awesome. So then, um, I guess, do you, I, do you have a, a date in mind of when the book is going to be ready to, to come out? No, unfortunately, I don't have all the power at that either. <laughs> Sometimes that that is just its own. There's a lot of cooks in the kitchen on that one. But stay tuned. Mm -hmm. You know, go to livingfullout.com. I just really invite everybody to follow us on whatever social media platform is your favorite because we're on six of them and because when we start to release that you will know and it, it's going to be good it's going to be riveting in its own way and there's people in my life who are going to be kind of surprised by some of the stories in it they think they know nancy but they're going to get to know me a lot better true true so it sounds like you're still kind of early in the the process is that right in in terms of the book oh no no we're yeah. No, we, we've made great advancements. It's just with a book, there's the writing aspect, there's the marketing aspect, there's just a lot to it. So, um, you know, I'm a realist when it comes to life. And so I'm, I'm always hesitant to give a, a date until I know it's a solid date, for sure. Oh, true. That's a, it's a good good to know because then you never know when a global pandemic will strike and yeah, push things back. Exactly, exactly. Oh, it's so sad. It really is. But yeah, but you know, I have to true. say, amongst the sadness of everything going on, people are helping people. People are spending mm -hmm. more time at home. I mean, I'm hearing from some of my coaching clients that they've finally had more family dinners than they've ever had. 
you know, they're actually being able to communicate with their kid. And a lot of times with these schools that are shut down, it's giving parents, although it's stressful, it's giving parents kind of a, a new outlet to finding out what their kids like about school and what they don't and kind of a true appreciation for how difficult some homework is for these students. True. Very true. And my wife is a, a teacher. So right now, of course, she's at home and they're trying to figure out distance learning here in, in San Antonio. Um, so she's she's having to deal with that stress. But at the same time, she's not stressed with being in the classroom. And I do see a big change in her. So I'm grateful for that. So I'm, I'm happy to see that. Oh, yeah. And and again, you know, it, it's her calling. I mean, she's, she's naturally mm-hmm. a teacher. Mm-hmm. True. She is. She is. Uh, so then you, you mentioned that, you know, you're, you're, there's the writing process and the marketing process. Um, you know, what is, what is marketing like for you for the book? What are your, your plans there? Well, it's interesting whether I'm marketing the book or whether I'm marketing videos or anything we do at Living Fill Out, it's kind of the same process. So you kind of have to go where the people are. And that's the thing. Um, marketing is, is, is exciting. It's fun. It's so fun to write copy that isn't sales copy. It's not about twisting someone's arm. It's not like con- about convincing someone. But when you, can, when you have a solution to somebody's problem, then it's a win-win. And so mm-hmm. it's finding groups that would benefit from our book or you know, all the different things we have at Living Fill Out, like even the radio show. It's finding the right groups, the right audience, and rather than assuming that everybody wants it. So, you know, it, it's an exciting adventure. And, um, you know, as a author, as a speaker, you know, my job is to be out there. Now, it's a little scary right now, right? I have to be six feet from somebody <laughs> to be out there. Mm-hmm. But, sure. right, yeah. but, um, but I, I think that, People um, are inspired by those that they can hug, that they can shake their hand, that they can wave to. You know, I, I always find it's really important that as good as online is, as good as radio is, podcasting is, people want that connection. They want to know you're real. And so um, that's why a lot of times I have to do the legwork and go to the coffee shop or go to the conference and, and, and be there to meet people. Sure. True. And yeah, you had mentioned that, you know, sometimes people just want to be hugged. Um, you know, when this all was getting started and I realized, you know, we're, we're banding together, I'm seeing some, some great stories come out of the, these hard times. And, you know, I, it sounds weird, but I just wanted to hug everybody. Like, we're going to get through this. You know, I'm, I feel for you, you know, it, you know, those moments of clarity you can sometimes have that we're all just people. It doesn't matter what your, your, your disability is or your ethnic background or your religious views or your political views. We're people and we're all in this together. And it was like, I just wanted to start hugging people. But I'm like, no, no, we can't do that. We got a social distancing and everything. So I, it, it was a weird, a weird moment for me. But you know what, though? I just felt like I got a verbal hug. So see, it can be a verbal Aww. hug. So in some ways, right there, what you just said, you hugged me through your story. And so I think if we can't physically hug each other, then it's just saying, oh, my gosh, you're so helpful. I could just hug you, you know, (laughs) or, oh, my gosh, you know, I can't believe you went to the grocery store and fought that line for me. If I had, like, gorilla arms, I would wrap around you three times, right? You know, you can tell somebody how much you care about them. And, you know, it's, it's what I think is so beautiful about what's happening right now amongst the sadness and amongst the stress, because there is all of that. There's the bonding that we're coming together. There's the fact that people are washing their hands more than ever, which should have always been, but we're doing it. Um, But also it's this separation thing is making us choose our words and talk. Mm -hmm. And so I think it's great. Wow. It is amazing. Yeah. It's, it's amazing. Uh, what I'm seeing just in these few days, uh, since things have really blown up here in the U S um, you know, what, what it's looked like on social media and in my communication with, not just with my family, but also with other professionals. So it's been amazing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And we will yeah. get through this. We will. And, um, you know, it's, um, it's just a, a moment in time, but I think it, I think it was an important moment because, I think we we were going in spirals. I think we were divided politically. I think families weren't 
eating together as much. I think everybody was just busy, a lot of doing, mm. right? Got to check that box. Yeah. Got to get to that soccer game. I, I, I got to work my nine to five and then I got to do my, my own business in the evenings, right? And this has kind of forced all of us to slow down and to not be selfish, even on the hoarding front of the toilet paper, right? Maybe don't yeah. take every roll of toilet paper, leave one. I, I was at the store and, and I, I love this lavender soap and my assistant was with me and she's like, well, how many do you want? And I said, and there were two, there were two of the lavender. And I said, you know what? I'm only going to take one. Even though I love this flavor, <laughs> the smell, and I could probably use it down the line six months from now, I'm going to leave that one because somebody else needs that. True. Mm-hmm. True. That's awesome. Well, uh, we're almost out of time. So, uh, if somebody's listening to this and they want to go see the the videos that you've posted or your other uh, messages on social media on the various social media channels you're on, uh, how can people find you, Nancy? Oh, thank you. Uh, well, the main hub for all of it is livingfullout.com, and when you go mm-hmm. there, you can access access the blog you can all of our social medias are on there you can click on the icon and go right to it um you can go to our radio page and listen to different episodes of our show um you can actually right there from the page even uh access the 24-hour station although you now know you can do that on the alexa and the app store too and then the other thing I want everybody to know is on the homepage, we do have something that's free. It's, it's 80 tips to bring balance in your life. And I wouldn't normally, you know, put focus on that. It's just I think right now people need balance. They need just give me a little tip, give me a little nugget of something. And in that 80 tips is going to be different suggestions for fitness, for nutrition, for setting goals. And so I just invite everyone to get that completely free. And, but I think it'll help a lot. Awesome. Awesome. I'll, I'll definitely be downloading that here uh, in, soon. Well, thank you so much for having me. And I just wish everybody so much love, lots of hugs, virtual communication hugs. Yes, and uh, virtual hugs. Yes. And just live full out, you know, remember to have fun. I think sometimes we just get so boggled by the to-dos and the stress, but remember to smile every day. Remember to give away your love and your time and, and, you know, we'll be on the right path. Definitely. Definitely. Well, Nancy Soleri, thank you so much for being on the Career Challenges podcast with me today. Thank you for having me. Thank you for listening to the Career Challenges Podcast. Don't forget to subscribe and like the Career Challenges Podcast on your favorite podcasting app. Visit careerchallengespodcast.com for more information. And if you really like me, then you'll write a review. And don't forget to pick up your free copy of 101 Questions to Ask before writing your book by visiting weckerlywriter.com. That's W-E-C-K-E-R-L-Y-W-R-I-T-E-R.com.